Hi, I'm Caleb Giddings from Gunnets Media, and today we're talking about two topics that I am very passionate about and also fairly well versed on. We are talking about self defense while dating. So I'm obviously not single anymore. Sorry, ladies and dudes. Uh, but not too long ago, I was very single. Some might even go so far as to say I was aggressively single. Uh, you can interpret that however you like. I learned a lot of valuable lessons while I was doing this, especially as we date in the uh, age of Tinder and Bumble and Swiper. And there's a new one like Mail box or hinge hinge and all of these online apps like people don't meet each other in the same ways that they used to and that can be dangerous there are some benefits there are some advantages but today i'm just going to give you guys because i love list videos i'm going to give you five dips five dips yeah let's do that five dips all right i'm going to give you guys five tips on how to stay safe while you're dating. And the first tip, and the most important tip, is to trust your instincts. And I put this one up front for a lot of reasons. And one of those is that dating is different for guys and girls, all right? Most guys, when they go on dates, are not in fear of being physically harmed. And I can think of all of the dates that I've been on, never at any time did I feel in danger for my life on that first date. Did I feel like I was in a situation with the girl that I couldn't fight my way out of using my bare hands? And that reality is not true for females. It's just not. You know, I had Annette Evans on uh, several months ago, and we talked about the fact that despite the fact that Annette is a fairly talented uh, shooter, she's in good physical shape, all of these other things, the odds of her being able to physically overpower me are very low, all right? And that's, not, again, not a knock on Annette. She's a smallish woman, all right? So that's why we lead with tip number one, trust your gut. Trust your gut. If a person or a situation is giving you a bad vibe, trust it. Don't feel societally pressured to go along with something that you're uncomfortable with doing just because you want to have a good time or you don't want to seem uncool or something like that. Because you know what is really uncool? Being fucking dead. Being dead is uncool, all right? So if you're in a weird situation, a situation that gives you the heebie-jeebies, uh, trust your gut, all right? And dudes, this applies to you too, all right? Although we're terrible at this as men. But guys, if you get a sketchy feeling about a, a female, uh, trust your gut. If your gut instinct is, this bitch be crazy, that bitch is probably crazy. Or at the very least, that bitch is emotionally incompatible with you. And I'm not saying bitch to be rude, but you guys get what I'm saying here. All right, so trust your instincts. Your instincts, you have them for a reason, and it's okay to trust them, all right? So rule number one, tip number one, whatever you want to call it, is very general, but trust your instincts, please. All right. If you see some bald freak with tattoos and like a face tattoo shows up for your date and you get freaked out, bail out the back. Just just dip. All right. It's okay to dip. All right. And that brings us in to tip number two. It's okay to do things to escape situations that make you feel uncomfortable that may seem rude, all right? For example, let's talk about uh, Caleb's E&E plan. So back when I was dating, I would always do a public meet for the first time that I would meet somebody, all right? It would always be in public, and it would also be... After a while, I had developed this strategy where it would be in a public place, in a bar that I knew very well, where I could also see the door. 
and I would position myself in this seat where I could see the door and the girl that I was meeting wouldn't know that there was a back door uh, to get out of that place. And the reason I did this was after I'd been catfished, not like super catfished, but I'd definitely fallen for the uh, upward camera angle shot that makes a girl look like she's not 300 pounds. Anyway, and this is kind of a dick move, but let's apply it to safety. So what I would do is if I found out I got catfish, I'd excuse myself to the bathroom, dip out the back door, wait till she left, and then go back and pay my tab. Pretty straightforward. Uh, anyway, let's apply this to a not dick situation, all right? So ghosting is a perfect example of that. You're chatting with some dude or some chick that you've matched up with on Tinder and you're trying to keep things light and easy and they start getting personal. They want like details about your life and like really super personal information that maybe you're not comfortable disclosing. Or you go on a date with somebody and the date doesn't really go well, but they keep and you're like, yeah, I don't want to deal with this. It's okay to ghost people, all right? If you get the heebie-jeebies about somebody, if they're weird or creepy or something like that, ghost them, all right? The reason why I'm pro-ghosting is because ghosting does not give people the opportunity for confrontations, and confrontations lead to escalation, and escalation leads to violence, and violence leads to bodies in the gutter, all right? And if our end state is avoiding bodies in the gutter, and ghosting accomplishes that, and that's your path of least resistance, fucking ghost people. I don't care, all right? I've been ghosted. I've ghosted other people. We're in a society now where it's very easy to make uh, impersonal connections that have very uh, high, high ramifications, bad consequences. That's the word I'm looking for. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, so it's okay to do things that you might feel socially uncomfortable with doing, like ghosting someone or refusing to meet someone at their home, or refusing to go home with somebody, or refusing to allow someone into your home. These are all things where there can be social pressure to not do them. You could be socially pressured to let a stranger, you know, come over, or, you know, go over to a stranger's house. And these, for the record, all of this advice from here on out is gender neutral, okay? Because women can uh, prey on men just as easily as men can prey on women. I'm very egalitarian about this. I I don't know if a chick's got like a can of chloroform and an Uzi in her apartment. Although if I dated a girl who had an Uzi in her apartment, that would have been pretty rad actually. Um, anyway, on that aside, tip number two is builds off of trust your instincts and it's don't be afraid to do things that you may think are socially inappropriate to protect yourself, all right? If a dude's being creepy, ghost him. If a woman's being creepy, ghost her. If a man or a woman asks you to do something that you are uncomfortable doing, don't be afraid to create a firm personal boundary. And that is tip number three. One of the things that we talk about is mental rehearsals. And in my other self-defense videos, I talk about this a lot where you need to do a walkthrough in your head of what am I willing to do to defend my life in situation X? What am I willing to do in situation Y? All right, you need to do that when you're sitting in your room by yourself alone with the TV off, petting your dog or whatever. These are when you draw your bright lines. You do not draw your bright lines out in the street, okay? That you don't, you won't have the time or the opportunity to do it there. You need to draw your bright lines while you are sitting at home on your couch by yourself. And when I say draw your bright lines, I mean tip number three, create personal boundaries. All right. These are your go, no goes, your unbreakable rules. Your personal boundary could be one that I had, which was I would not take girls back to my apartment until I was relatively certain they weren't going to rob me. <clears throat> I know that seems weird, but nobody wants to get Cardi B'd in this world, right? I don't want to get drugged and robbed. Uh, oh yeah, that's a fact, by the way. Cardi B drugged people and robbed them. Anyway, let's not forget that. Create those boundaries now because when you're out and you're having a good time and you've had a couple of drinks and you know, you're know you out with some cute girl or some cute dude 
and you're having a great old time, it's going to be easier to have the courage and the conviction to stick to a boundary that you already created than it will be to try to create one on the spot. So make those boundaries and make them here at home. Tip number four is know your locations. And this is a really important one, um, especially if you carry tools uh, for self-defense with you. It's important to know where you're going and uh, what type of security they have. So for example, if you and a guy or girl are Ubering separately to meet up at bar XYZ, I'm not saying that you should do a reconnaissance run a few days before to figure out what type of security they have, but that's also not a terrible idea because hypothetically, a young warthog who looked a lot like a, a, a younger, less tattooed version of me once went on a date and when he got to the bar with this girl that he was going on the date with, he discovered that they would, had metal detectors and were doing pat-down searches at the uh, front door. Now, there are ways to defeat that if you're carrying, but we're not going to go into that in a video because that's an approach. So this young warthog had to, oh, I forgot something in my car, oh my gosh, and basically ran a mile back to his car to dump his self-defense tools before he could continue on this date. Needless to say, that date didn't go well. So know your terrain, know where you're going. And this is important too because knowing the, where the exits are, knowing where the ingress and egress points are, all of these things are important to know when you're going out with a stranger because that's what a date is. It's stranger danger with someone you might want to fuck later. The future is weird, man. But knowing those points can also be beneficial because clubs especially if you go to clubs. Uh, clubs can be places where people like to get liquored up and fight other people. And if something goes sideways and you don't want to be involved with it, you need to know how to get the hell out of town. And knowing the lay of the land is very beneficial for that. So that's tip number four, is know the lay of your land. And tip number five is if you do, if you are trained and you normally carry self-defense tools, carry them on your fucking dates. I actually went on dates with uh, girls who had carry permits and some of those dates resulted in clothes coming off. And you know how many times those girls had their guns on them? Fucking zero. All right? Fucking zero. Carry your goddamn guns, people. Especially if you're going to go stranger danger with somebody that you may want to fuck later. You don't know this guy or girl. Carry your guns. Uh, it's. I do have to add a rule 5A for this, though. If you are going to carry a gun on a date, you need to have a plan for what you're going to do if slash when clothes come off. Do you have a lockable safe in your car you can stash it in? Are you going to develop a super ninja move where you can unzip your hoodie and pull your holster and whole rig off and ball them up and set them aside in one swift move, which I did. You need to have a plan for this because you cannot improvise that. Oh, you know, And this also depends a lot on where you're dating, who you're dating. Like if you meet a girl from farmersonly.com and you live in rural Indiana, you could probably just tell her, hey, I have a carry permit and I have my gun on me and she'd be cool with it. That won't work as well in Los Angeles County. So understand your environment. So that's rule 5A is have a plan for what you're going to do with your dangerous shit when the clothes start coming off. Because if you don't, it's just going to go sideways. But that's it. That, 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 that's it. These are really simple tips. Trust your instincts. Trust your instincts, people. Come on. That's so, so important. Be okay doing things that might be socially unacceptable. Set your bright boundaries. Set your lines. Know what your line in the sand is. You know, it could be as simple as, I will not get into a car against my will. That's a good one, by the way. Uh, a lot of very reputable self-defense trainers say that, you know, one of the most dangerous situations that you, 
that can occur to a man or a woman is to be placed into a vehicle against their will. Because when you're being kidnapped and taken to a new location, your odds of survival go. So maybe that's your line in the sand. I will not be taken, put into a vehicle against my will. Uh, I will not allow a stranger into my apartment for the first five dates. I don't know what your lines are. You have to figure those out for yourself. You know, and then obviously, know the lay of the land. Know where you're going, where the exits are, how to get there, you know, what your transpo options are. Are you going to drive then, which means you can't drink? Are you going to Uber? You know, that sort of stuff. And then last, number five, carry your tools, all right? If you carry a gun, carry a gun. Don't fucking drink to the point of excess while carrying your gun, mind you. It is illegal in all states that I'm aware of to be drunk and packing at the same time, so don't do that. And I should caveat, in some states it's illegal to have guns in bars, period. So do what you believe your lawyer can handle. Uh, I'm not advocating that you break the law, but if you don't get caught... Anyway carry your tools, and then have a plan for what you're going to do with those tools in the event that sexy time happens. I'm Caleb Giddings. I hope this video has been educational, informative, and entertaining. Thanks for watching. Until next time, remember, run your gun, not your mouth.